so what was that time like for you guys? You know, you guys are you guys were with Tupac. You guys are doing a lot of dope. You guys are staying with him. You know, he's doing movies, music. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. all it just seemed like he just had like a, a string of bad luck, and now he's in prison. You know. Yeah, I think uh, for us because we were all young. You know what I mean? So when these things happen to young people, we don't really look at the effect. That, uh, we, we just look at it like, okay, it's going to get better the next day. You know what I mean? We just rolling with the roller coaster. You know, I think um, because when things started heating, like really getting serious, he got that deal with Death Row. And you got to remember back then, Death Row was the hottest record label. So we knew, okay, now that once you get to Death Row, everything going to change. Okay. You know okay, I mean? so you guys heard about everything when he was in, he was locked up. He was telling us everything because we was visiting him. Remind, remind you, the more visits you get, the more you just come out. So he was making sure every day he, he was getting visits. You know what I mean? We was taking turns visiting him, and he was just, um, you know, telling us everything. I remember the time he said, yeah, I got, you know, I think about going to death row. You know, I'm going to sign with Suge. We was with it, of course, you know, because we knew what record label back in that day, death row was number one. Did Pac have any hesitations about signing to Death Row or, you know, reservations or anything? Nothing openly. He didn't display anything. He, it seemed like, because you hear all types of rumors that he didn't really want to. He felt like he had no other choice. Um, you know, he was happy from, from, from what I seen. You know what I mean? His relationship with Suge was cool from what I seen from the time he signed until he passed away. Like, You guys were staying up there by the prison and seeing him all the time? Yeah, we was um, actually... We was, we was in New Jersey. The outlaws, they came and they stayed at my grandmother's house in New Jersey. And we would drive up north, upstate. Sometime we were flying to Canada, sometime. So we would always go back and forth. We were always driving. Like, we would, he would always have someone to bring us. You know what I mean? So, he, and he got visits every day. If it wasn't one of the outlaws, it was a family member, it was a friend. He just kept, you know, we was taking turns visiting him. I seen somewhere the shit was trying to sign Tupac before death, before everything happened and you know, like b before the jail incident. Is there any truth to that? I seen Suge himself say that. You know what I mean? <coughs> I seen Suge himself say that one time they was all in Interscope and this one Pac was with the with the the the, the, the thug life dudes and Suge was like, Yeah, I'm gonna holler at you and he said Pac which is wild, like walked out. He was like he wasn't ready then. You know, Pac was like he he wasn't feeling it back then. You know, so he always wanted Pac. But you gotta remember there was a time Death Row artists couldn't do no music with nobody other than Death Row artists. Nate Dogg and them back in the day, Snoop and them, they never did collabs with anybody. Suge wouldn't allow it. But Pac was the only one before he signed Death Row. He had songs with Nate Dogg, he had music with Daz. Suge was always showing him love, you know what I mean? That's true. I do remember that being, I, I mean, to us it was a rumor. You know what I'm saying? We, we didn't know, but I remember, you know, just like, yeah, you don't really, it's very rare to see a Death Row artist with no one, you, you didn't see it until something. later, until they got off of death row. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so Tupac bills Tupac out, puts up the million dollars, Tupac gets an appeal. Yes. And where are you guys at? When he first got bailed out, I was in my grandmother's house. He called, he was on a private plane back to LA. I think um, he. some of us went that day, I think Gaddafi and Fatal, Edie, if I'm not mistaken, flew to LA. And a couple of days later, myself and Castro, whoever was left, flew to LA. So we went right to Los Angeles, you know what I mean? And um, they picked us up, sent us a limo, picked us up, and they took us to the Peninsula Hotel in Beverly Hills. And they had a whole bunch of rooms on the floor. We went in the room and seen Pac, and he was happy, you know, with a bunch of, he, the room was crowded because he had a lot of people coming to visit him and stuff. What was that time like for you guys? I bet that was, you know, pretty dope. He's out. Yeah, we, we was happy, man. He's home, you know. He's home, and, you know, the last time I seen him before that, he was in prison. So now to see him home, normal clothes on, having a good time, you know, in a hotel in Beverly Hills. So he was, he was enjoying himself. A lot of studio work. Yeah, right after that, I think a couple days later, when I got there, to believe it or not, he was already playing about seven or eight songs. And I think he was just home for a couple days, you know. So the next day, we went straight to the studio. Do you remember the first song you recorded with him? I don't remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so he's in there, he's working, you know, uh, working on All Eyes on Me. Yes. And studio, what was that time like for you guys? It was, um, you know, the studio on Death Row was different before Death Row studio session because it was, you know, Pac came home, so it was always crowded. 
You know what I mean? The studio was always crowded, was always rowdy. Just it was a wild environment. Now looking back at it, I don't even know how we was able to even do any, get anything done in that environment. You know, <laughs> it's <was> dysfunctional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a dysfunctional environment, you know, nothing but drugs, alcohol, gang bangers, gang members. And <laughs> you know, when you look back at it, you're like, how do people work in that environment? But that's all we knew, you know? Was there always a lot of people in the studio? All the time. Until the last, the last, you know, the last sessions, I think Pac started getting tired of having a bunch of people and it just started being like closed sessions. You know what I mean? But when he first came home, everybody and their mother wanted to come and be in his session, come and show him love, you know? What was his thoughts on Biggie and everything at this time? Was he, like, getting ready, like, yo, man, I'm about to, like, we about to go to war with this dude? Yeah, he was already doing diss songs, dissing them. You know, he was already getting to that point now when he started dissing them. You know, even in prison, before prison, like, he was write letters sometimes send us letters. Whenever he sent a letter out, he would have, you know, gang culture, especially West Coast gang culture, they write the name of the person and cross them out. So he would write, and Biggie be at the bottom, Bad Boy be at the bottom. And I'm from New Jersey, so I didn't really know what he was doing. You know, Big Psycho started explaining it to me. So he was already getting on that. Okay. And so in 1995, uh, Dog Pound goes to New York. Yes. To shoot the video for New York, New York. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, Corruptus did interviews and said that they actually meant the song in a positive way, but New York took it as a diss, and they had the trailer shot up. Yeah. What was Tupac's reaction when he found out that all this happened? He was like, basically, see, <laughs> see how they feel about West Coast artists. You know what I mean? Uh, said Biggie got on the radio and was like, they here di doing a, re a video dissing us. Are you guys gonna let it happen? People from New York re responded by shooting up the trailer. You know what I mean? 